This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about analog life in the 80s, the conveniences of an American kitchen, and making music videos for Michael Jackson. All that and more as we watch Season 5, Episode 11 of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello, listener, and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Imran. I'm here every episode. Joining me this week, the birthday girl herself, my sister, Sophia. Happy birthday, Sophia. Thank you, Imran. I'm so happy. Um, But today was just kind of like a regular other day. It is my birthday. But remember when we were kids? When we were kids, it was such a big deal, and the parents cracked out the old VHS video camcorders. Oh, I have, you know what? I have videos. My ninth birthday is on a tape, and I remember our birthday parties. Yes, and every every few years I would pop it in and watch it. Uh, ties in beautifully. I'm um, look. We're not going to mention our ages. We're old. You no, know that. No, we're old enough to the, have video camcorder VHS. Yes, and you get to this age birthday on your birthday. Videos. What do you do? You record a podcast, and it's a thrill. And you get a free Starbucks. You are owed that free Starbucks. Yes, absolutely. You are entitled to it. But and you know, I got a venti because it was free. <laughs> Yeah, home videos of our birthdays, and we'll talk more about that later because I got so many personal (laughs) connections to this week's episode of Perfect Strangers. We are at Season 5, Episode 11, titled Home Movies. Home Movies, which is that phrase itself. Okay, so it doesn't refer to anything except what it is, home movies, but we don't say home movies anymore because our whole lives now are home movies in the form of reels and social media content. You don't but, walk around with your phone going, I'm making a home movie. No, no it's an outdated once term. Once upon a time, yes. it was a very special thing. And we'll talk a, about a that hobby. at the end too. It's so wild. Yeah. Lots to of, make home movies yes, was yes. a big deal Yeah, to record these memories. Now it's um, not. <laughs> it's a big but deal in this episode. Let, let's go back in time to the late eighties. And um, if you were to open the TV guide description ahead of this episode, you would have read Balky objects to the script changes when Larry takes charge of shooting a home video to send to Balky's mother for the Bartokamas family reunion and Jamboriki in in Nipos. I feel like right there we should start explaining things to people because this whole concept. If uh, if any of our listeners are young enough, a lot of this is not going to make sense. Anyways, uh, cast this episode joining us, of course, the great Bronson Pinchot as Balky Bartokamas, the hilarious Mark Lynn Baker as Larry Appleton, who is in in the uh, She Hulk show, the season finale. He's in the season finale, and there's a he does a bunch of lines, and it has the Larry energy coming out. Mm. Like it sounds like older Larry Appleton. It's so great. I haven't gotten there yet. It's a great show. Rebecca Arthur is Marianne. Melanie Wilson is Jennifer Lyons. We are also featured players Belita Moreno as Lydia, Sam Anderson as Mr. Gorpley, and a bust a bunch of guest cast people. This episode aired on December 8th, 1989, and on this night, it was Friday, of course, and Balky and Larry hosted uh, the TGIF evening the night that this episode they did aired. a bunch of those, huh? Yes. Yeah. Perfect Strangers also streaming for free on Amazon Freebie. It is the home of the Cousins right okay. now in 2022. If you want to check out the show and binge and watch along with us, that's where you can find it. So let's find out what is a home movie. We, we, we will s- explain. Let's get into act one. We start in the sh- uh, basement of the Chronicle where the cousins work. Again. And we hear Balky offstage, like from the garage area, coming into the basement. And we hear his voice saying, Mama, if you thought the parking lot was spectacular, wait until you see what I'm going to show you next. And then he runs into the basement and he's holding this big video camera contraption looking which we'll, through the we'll uh, explain eyepiece. in a minute yes. yes and he says because mama this is where cousin larry and i work and so he's got this okay describe the video camera of 1989 so this one is it's a it's a it's a big there are silver boxes with a lens in front and a big clunky eyepiece but this one's maybe uh it's smaller than they were in the early 80s it takes the smaller tapes uh, to record on, not a full VHS tape 
earlier models, you had to pop a whole VHS tape and have it on your shoulder because these video cameras were so huge. This one, you slap on this, the hand strap and you can hold it up. Mm-hmm. It, and it was a big deal like to have this kind of freedom in a, on a, a consumer level video recording device, almost like a film camera or a broadcast camera shrunken down. That's right. So you do have some, we do have some idea of what it looks like, like a, like a broadcast, a mini broadcast camera. And so he's holding it and he's like up to his eye and he's pointing it around the room and he's talking to Mama Bartakumus and he's showing her different parts. This is Cousin Larry's desk and this is his favorite coffee cup. Then he turns the camera, the whole thing around to point himself. You couldn't just flip the lens around. No, like there was no button phone. to flip camera. <laughs> you so swing he the like, swings around. the whole thing around, point to himself. He goes, I give it to him last Christmas about the coffee cup. Here's a cool thing in this episode a couple of times that we don't usually see fun camera things on this show, but it actually cuts to the black and white image that Balky is seeing yeah. through first the, person point through of the video view camera with a little white border and some crosshairs in the middle. And it and it's like you are looking through this video camera. As Balky and it's is black recording. and white, meaning in the late 80s, you still couldn't see. Like, I, yeah, I was trying to remember. I think I'm trying to remember if those viewfinders were. I feel like the word color. color. I think ours had color. But, I, but probably the original ones yeah. were just in black and white. They may all have been black and white. I cannot remember. Yeah. But they probably did this here just for effect. For effect. It, yeah, if to, it, even if to it was. Differentiated yeah. it a little bit. So he continues showing this is Cousin Larry's pencil cup. This is Cousin Larry's <laughs> typewriter. And again, he's making a video to show, to send back home to Meepo. So he's very excited about like every, showing every single thing because life is quite different on Meepo's. And then the elevator door opens and it's Larry and he comes into the basement and Balky says, and this, and then he points the camera at Larry, but Larry like had moved out of the way and he's, Balky gets confused, like, where'd he go? And then he finds him and he goes, this is cousin Larry. <laughs> so he's making this video and I just want to pause and talk about Larry's outfit. You want to do some Larry duds here? Let's Larry do some duds Larry needs duds. to come back because we always talk about Balky's clothes, which Balky has an amazing outfit too. We'll yes. describe it later. But why did this catch your eye? Because it's different. Like we always used to talk. Remember in the early seasons, we talked about how Larry Plain was Jean. wearing like very 80s solid, like yeah. greens and blues yeah. a lot. And yeah. occasionally like a green and blue plaid. But now he's in this like white with black stripes, pretty loud though. Vertical shirt, stripes, vertical sh- stripe, shirt, shirt, big stripes, and then this big loud tie that has like flowers on it. No, it's for... like abstract shapes. It's yeah. like circles and triangles. It's and very gradients. like early nineties. It reminded yeah. me of like Saved by the Bell. Yes, yeah, very trapper yeah. keeper, trapper uh, keeper cover. Uh, meanwhile, Balky's got like these green pants on and like this big fat belt cummerbund, cummerbund that looks like embroidered. it's embroidered. Yeah. Yes, and then the front of his shirt is. It's delightful. This has to be embroidery of like leaves and uh, yeah. trees and like hanging baskets on this tan shirt. And the shirt's got no collar. It, I, I would wear this shirt. It's a beautiful shirt. It's a nice. I yeah. want it. Okay. So back in the scene. So Larry's just entered in this crazy outfit. And uh, Balky is filming Larry and he says, don't you just want to pinch them <laughs> little cheeks? And then he goes, yee. <laughs> and he pinches his cheeks. And he pinches his <laughs> cheeks. And then we find out through their conversation that Balky is actually rented. So, so video cameras, home cameras were, were, they were very expensive by the late eighties. And we'll go through the history. I'll of say that. they were ubiquitous by 89, but still you're talking a couple hundred dollars yeah, at so, minimum to get one of these things. So I didn't know this. I don't remember this, but apparently you could rent one. Yeah. Well, you could rent everything. And we find out that he's making a videotape story of his life to send to his mama. Aww. Because why? Because he's the guest of honor at this year's Bartokamus family reunion and Jamboriki. Jamboriki. And Larry's a little bit confused. He's like, you're going to Meepo's? And Balky says, of course I'm not. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> but he is sending the tape in his place. And then he says, everyone will ask, is it Balky or is it Memorex? <laughs> and then he turns the camera again to look into it. He says, where do I come up with them? So we have to explain this joke right here, too. Okay, here's some more ancient, outdated technology that doesn't exist anymore. I knew this line. This was a common line yeah. from a, a famous commercial for Memorex made 
audio cassette tapes and to tout that how high fidelity the quality of the recording was, Mm -hmm. the tagline in their their slogan they used for many years was, is it live or is it Memorex? Like you wouldn't know if you played a concert on a tape. You would think it's live. That's how good. These are audio tapes with a magnetic tape strip. I don't know how to even describe this. You now see (laughs) them on uh, cell phone cases if you're trendy or like credit cards. You could get an old school audio tape. It's what you would make a mixtape on. Uh, But apparently it started with this classic commercial featuring Ella Fitzgerald. Well, it didn't start with it. That was the most famous one. And that was also the reference. We've had a reference to Memorex in this show before. And it was in reference to this most famous commercial that featured Ella Fitzgerald. And the reference was way back in the very first episode, the pilot episode, when they shattered glass in Oh, in Twinkasetti's in store. Do you remember that? Yeah. So the Ella Fitzgerald commercial, in it, she sings and hits this high note and shatters a glass. Right. And then they do the same thing with, with the Memorex, Memorex tape and it shatters recording yeah. on a Memorex cassette. So I remember the Memorex commercial. I remember it's another famous commercial. You may already have this image in your head. It was yeah. this dude with glasses and slick back hair sitting in, in a black armchair. chair yeah. and in front of a stereo. And he would turn it on and the f- sound wave would just be like <laughs> this big fan would turn on and it would push it back. Blast it in his face. Yes, and he'd be like, was it live or is it Memorex? It was famously parodied many times. Okay. But again, no more cassette tapes. (laughs) No more Memorex. Does Memorex still make other stuff? I don't know. Hopefully they pivoted. Yeah. No more video cameras. Well, there are video cameras. It's a whole different thing. We'll get into it. So Belky has just told Larry that his plan, he's going to send a video in his place for this reunion. And Larry tells him it's a very nice idea, but he has a minor technical problem. Oh, what's Uh-oh, that? here comes some Larry explaining. Oh, boy. And Balky says, no, I'm way ahead of you. I've already taken off the lens cap, <laughs> and I'm looking through the small end. Oh, good. Here's another very dated <laughs> joke about the dated video yeah. camera. How to even explain a lens cap. So the lens of the camera. It's glass, right? And you got to protect it. So you'd have a cap to cover from gla- dust and like, stuff. Can't, like like uh, ca- photo cameras have now. Yeah, DSLR cameras yeah. still have lens caps. And I mean, it's still a common thing where you can forget to take the forget lens cap. I use, off, yeah. For work, I use a DSLR all the time. You got to make sure you take that. It's the rule number one. Take off the lens cap or you're okay. not getting anything. But it's still funny. <laughs> yeah, but if people are not familiar with DSLR cameras, they... Like, well, no, well, that's the thing is most people your use phone. Yeah. your phone. So that's not what the problem is. Larry says, what I mean is your mama won't be able to watch this without a video cassette playback machine. machine. <laughs> and he starts to exp- Larry explain. He's like, you see, the tape goes in the thing. And Balky just cuts him off and goes, you mean a VCR? I was like, <laughs> what? what? Uh, and he goes, uh, mama has one. They have VCRs on me posts, Larry asks. And Balky explains that they have one. Mama rented it from Vito Babumiki's Babu Video Land and Sheep Shearing Empor- Emporium. So, <laughs> video Land and Sheep Shearing listen, Emporium. Listen, good for Vito that like he had a sheep shearing business and he saw the rise of video and to just, you know, incorporate it, <laughs> branch out. Uh, so, yeah, she rented it. And then Larry's like, but does she have a TV set? He goes, well, I tell you, last fall, Polknok the peddler came through the town with his donkey all loaded down with pots and pans and dried herbs. And a 50-inch rear projection TV. <laughs> I was like, what? I can just <laughs> imagine that image. It's so funny. Yes, like, you see this mule with a cart and yeah, these pots and, like, and pans and then and strapped to the back. And yes. vegetables and then just like, a, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to explain what that is also. Rear projection. 50-inch rear projection set. He says, Mama got it on Poconok's famous revolving credit plan. If you don't pay, he straps you to a windmill. Ha <laughs> 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 Okay, rear projection TVs at this time. What is that? Were the height of your, if you wanted a big screen TV, you could not just get these LEDs you hang on the wall. It was a giant 80 inch TV that had a, a, a curved piece in front with three lights at the bottom. Actually, this was the back, it was rear projection. Behind it, it was a RGB. There was a red light, green light, and a blue light. And this thing, these lights would project on the back of this TV and give you this huge. Im- TV image. It was just a way to get a giant you screen mean without having a of tube. The screen. the screen, yes. So like there wasn't the inside. Of yes, the there wasn't yeah. a tube because if you tried to make a tube TV at this size, the thing would be yeah. ginormous. So back then, the only thing they could do is sit, but it was still bulky. 
You, yeah. I remember seeing these when people would throw them out on the on the street <laughs> when they were done, and I think they would break down often. But there were these giant lights in the back. But it was like the 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 height, the higher end consumer. Yeah. I always wanted we one. Never we never had, had one. one. No, right? we just had a giant yeah, CRT. A- but if you had like if you were like a person who wanted a home video yeah. back then, you had this. Or if you were Balky's mama. Somehow I'm supposed to have one of these <laughs> fancy rear projection TVs. A lot of things to explain this episode. So, updated tech. <laughs> so then, OK, back in the scene. So Larry's like, all right, you have the technology. And then he asked Balky what the movie is going to be about. And Balky says that he just wanted to video let the camera run for 24 hours and call it 24 hours in the life of Balky Bartokamas. Oh boy. Okay. And then he goes back to filming and he like points it at Larry again as he walks backward away from him and he goes leaving cousin Larry and then pinchable little cheeks and then again he goes yee beep 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 or whatever the noise was. And then he shows Balky's workplace and he tells his mama, this is my table. And then he gets onto the table and shoots <laughs> straight down into the baskets where the letters are. He's like, this shot. is a letter that's going to the second floor. And this is a letter that's going to the third floor. And he's doing all this. Um, as he's doing all that, the elevator opens again. And here comes Miss Lydia Markham. She says hi to Larry. She says hi to Balky. And Balky quickly... Hides the video Hides camera the behind camera his back. Because what did we learn the last, entire plot of last episode? Is Lydia is deathly afraid of video and cameras. And she did not get over her trauma cameras. of cameras. And I was wondering right, if was Larry no made it worse. Yes. And now here is a continuing plot line episode At least they episode. remembered this time. This is crazy. <laughs> this is unheard of on these kind of shows. Yes. Con- continuity. Okay, so now I'm like, oh boy, there's a camera. Lydia's there. What is going to happen? Balky tells her, she's like, what do you have behind your back? Balky tells her, it's the thing that frightens you the most in the world. And Lydia goes, you have a copy of my driver's license photograph? <laughs> Must not be funny. <laughs> he says, no, Miss Lydia, it's a video camera. And he tells her he's making a tape to send home. And he's having all his friends say hello. And Lydia says, don't worry. I've been working with a therapist. Oh, there's some developments on this. He taught me a way to overcome my fear of cameras. Get out. She goes, it's a new Russian technique. That's random. (laughs) And she would love to say hello to Balky's mama. Okay. All right. So she's over her thing. Great. So Balky whips the camera out and uh, he turns it on Lydia and uh, he goes, okay. And he leans back. He goes, uh, here's Lydia. She's the Chronicles advice columnist. I love this slide. He goes, whenever you're ready, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and we see, it's again, first person view through the viewfinder. And we see Lydia. And she raises her hand like there's a sock puppet on there. And she goes, but hello. without Mrs. a sock. Without a sock. <laughs> and she makes a talk. And she goes, hello, Mrs. Bartokomus. In a funny voice. You have a fine son. It's a pleasure knowing him. I don't know what accent she's doing either. It's uh, kind of vague. It's yeah. definitely a funny voice accent. And because so there's a reaction shot of Larry as he's why he's like, Larry's like, what, what is happening is, right now? Yeah. Uh, and then she just goes, do you need anything else, Balky? And he goes, that'll do it. <laughs> and she turns to leave and she's like, see you later. And as she turns, she's still holding up her hand puppet yes. and she turns her head toward her hand saying, you were very good. And then the hand goes, thank you. <laughs> in the funny voice. <laughs> so and is Larry what, is still like, what is going on with Lydia? This was uh, the Russians were very uh, advanced yeah. in there. This is a Russian technique. Remember? Right. Uh, so so fun fact, the episode we reviewed last week with Lydia's fear of cameras yeah. was filmed much much earlier in the season than this episode but i guess they put them back well, to back because yes. it made sense smart yeah. smart move you know, we know these things are filmed out of order and aired out of order uh, a lot of times but for some reason somebody had the foresight to be like let's just put these two together so the audience remembers lydia's fear i wish they did this more but this is amazing continuity for an 80s sitcom yeah <laughs> Uh, so Balky is still um, on the table. I know uh, he gets off at this point and he's like, uh, now it's time to watch me work. And he puts the camera <laughs> on the corner of the table next to a pile of letters. And er- he picks up the letters one at a time and shows it to the camera and then dumps it and tosses it in, in one of the baskets. And that's when Larry interrupts him. <laughs> Larry's going to have to get involved here. Of course, this is probably driving him crazy as he walks over and he goes, excuse me, Balky, 
He goes, the film you're making is going to give your mom a whiplash and motion sickness. Uh, and Belky points the camera to himself. He goes, uh-oh. Uh-oh. He goes, that's what happened when she rented Jaws 3D and forgot to wear the glasses. Jaws. <laughs> Jaws. Jaws being, of course, the uh, famous uh, shark movie. Yeah, the th- from I think the, the third or fourth one was like Jaws 3D and the franchise takes a big dip <laughs> after the first Jaws, which is the only good Jaws. Larry offers to help him, of course. Of Here course he's going to get involved. Uh, what kind uh, of experience does Larry Appleton have at this? Okay, so he answers. He says uh, he has some experience in filmmaking. He was the audiovisual monitor in grade school for five <laughs> years. All right, that means he was called a nerd and bullied a lot going, because that's what happened to those people. Remember that means he just kid? rolled the TV yes, into the different rooms. And plugged it in. Yes. And, yes. But also they would and have been, set up the yes. projector. And they were considered AV nerds. Yeah. Now a lot of those AV nerds grew up to be talented filmmakers, I'm yeah. sure. But at the time. And then Balky is shocked at this news. And I love this slide. He goes, you know... You live with someone. uh, (laughs) You think you know them. He's like, you live with someone. You think you know them. Shocked at this. And Larry's just going to take over now. Larry's going to take over. He says he is certain that they can make a film that they that would make Balky's mama the proudest woman at the reunion. And Balky's like, great. That's what I want. Larry's in full director mode now. He says, I think we share a vision and we could make that vision a reality. You know he's excited because he's using his pointer finger a lot yeah. and he's getting very excited like he is all into this. And he's like, that is if you want my help. Of course, he's manipulating Balky. And Balky's like, I do, I do want your help. Balky says, what do we do first? And Larry takes the camera and looks around, looks at it. He says, well, first thing we got to do is get a tape for this thing. <laughs> it's because, of course, you needed a tape, a thing that physical recorded. magnetic tape to capture the images capture on. the images on not like the phones yeah it was not digital analog this is considered analog technology and bulky goes wow you are good yeah <laughs> he points to like the little window to show that there's no tape in there so all that was just a waste uh about yeah. this time so, yeah it was practice all right. all right maybe larry can help him out let's see how this goes so we cut to the next scene and it's in the apartment the next morning and Larry's like, all right, here we go. Larry has the camera now. <laughs> yes. And it's like on a strap around his neck. Yes. Just hanging. And he is stand- he's in the living room with the camera pointed at Balky's bedroom door. And he says, a day in the life of Balky Bartokamus. And he goes, you ready? And then Balky runs out of his bedroom door into the living room. He goes, yeah, I'm ready. And then he runs back yeah, into his room and closes the door. Again. That's not the cue to come out. He's got to go back in. So then he comes out again and he says, good morning, mama, and throws um, kisses toward the camera. And Larry films him as he goes into the kitchen. And Balky's very excited to show mama the kitchen. And he starts saying, mama, you won't believe the things we have in here. And Larry calls, cut, cut. Oh, stop. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Balky's like, I'm showing mama the kitchen. Uh, Obviously, this is not in the script that Larry has written. He says, this is the breakfast scene, Balky. You're supposed to come in, grab your cereal, sit down and have breakfast. Did you look at the script? And he grabs the clipboard. We're back to clipboard Larry. Yeah, clipboard Larry. Like in the Bibby Bobka episode, anytime Larry has a clipboard, this is not good. Not good. Things are not going to go well. And Balky says, yes, I did look at the script. He goes... Where's the part where I show mom in the kitchen? And and oh, in director mode, Larry's like, I cut that part. We're running long. Uh, he goes, but, and then Bucky goes, but I like the part where I show mom in the kitchen. Uh, and Larry's like, it doesn't move the story. He's getting all into this. And then Bucky just repeats and pouts, but I like the part where I show mom in the kitchen. And Larry finally concedes. He goes, okay, we'll shoot it and work it out in editing. And I'm glad they did. Do the part where he shows mama the kitchen because I thought it was so great. Yeah. Uh, having lived in other parts of the world, less developed parts of the world, it is so relevant. Like what he's showing in the kitchen, the way he sees the yeah. modern things in the kitchen. What our conveniences we yeah. take for granted every it's amazing. day so, uh, would actually surprise someone in third world. Yes. And how would that go? We find out from Le- from Balky saying, we're about to find out from Balky. 
uh, because Larry says, okay, take it from this is our kitchen. And Balky just says, give me a minute. And he like puts his head <laughs> in his hands to like regroup as an actor up, or whatever. Yes. Balky's up centering himself and learn some acting techniques. Give um, me a minute. I love and that. center himself, right? Yeah. So he starts, and this is the amazing description of his modern kitchen. He says, this is our kitchen. And mama, you just wouldn't believe the things we have in here. And then he goes to the stove. And now we're seeing it through the viewfinder again. He turns on a burner on the stove. He goes right in this room inside our apartment. Inside our apartment, we have, he turns on the burner fire. (laughs) And then he moves to the sink and turns on the faucet. And he says, water. And then he moves to the refrigerator. He opens the door. He says, and you better sit down for this one, mama. Winter in a box. (laughs) He said, if you had one of these, you wouldn't have to take your frozen foods to the top of Mount Meepos. Uh, you know what? And this is amazing because I just picture like the people on Meepos going, we got to go to the well to get water. We yeah. got to pack snow to keep our food. And you could just make fire with a click of a button. Like it's not even a microwave. It's which amazing. Is, right? To them, it would Listen, be like, not even, you've been there. Th- we're talking about Meepos in the late 80s, yeah. but like even Still. more recently in yeah. the early 2000s, I lived in a village in Uzbekistan and it was great, but... Uh, it was very villagey, and we didn't have these things. We didn't have water. We didn't have running water in the kitchen. We did have, uh, we did have a stove, but you had to like light it. Sometimes yeah. when the gas was yeah. out, yeah, yeah, you'd have to make a fire pile- outside yeah. oh. and put it on the burner there. Uh, but you had to like light it with like a piece of crumpled up newspaper or something. And then there wasn't, there wasn't a refrigerator. There was just a room, a cold room. Yeah. Where you would just put like the milk or whatever. So this would blow their mind yeah, yeah. if they saw something like this. Inside an apartment. Well, I mean, in, they have yeah. in the cities, they have that stuff. So, but and I not only that, that it's inside too. a box in the air that yeah. is stacked on other boxes that all have these things. Like, yeah. it's really weird when you think about it. It is. All put together in a small area. Like, it's why, like, who came up with this, this whole thing? I also think it's really weird that we have toilets, uh, oftentimes right next to the kitchen inside a house, like, it's, oh, listen, in, in New York, there are apartments where the bathroom is in the kitchen. Yeah. Like, they're that tiny. I've seen them. In my studio. Where your bathtub is right there. Yeah. Uh, in my last apartment, the bathroom was right next to the kitchen. That's because the, the plumbing like, that is, it has, disgusting. Because the plumbing is all in one place. And they, you know, it's got to. Well, that's disgusting. It's, it's so much more hygienic to, to like go together. outside of your living residence and do your business there. And then that is a good point, too, I guess. So I didn't gross. think about it that way. And another anyway. interesting thing, kind of a blooper and a, a neat mm. bit here is when Larry is shooting the stove where a return to the first person view through the viewfinder. But if you know this set, you know where the kitchen's in the back and their little eating area is in front. We are now behind that sh- looking through the supposed fourth wall. That's right. That's invisible where the audience is and you can kind of see part of a camera and I think like a crew member standing there, yeah. you see the chair and the table of the dining room table, yeah. but then there's no wall. Like it, they, there's they, no wall. It's so <laughs> it's like the first peek through the fourth wall of the show. It's yeah. just kind of crazy. But how else would they have done that? No, that's yeah. it. You, or you would, yeah, if you would hold the camera lower or closer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting too. Okay, so he's just shown in this amazing little monologue, like all the. Amazing things in this kitchen. Balgi closes the refrigerator and says, well, I guess I'll have my breakfast now. And then he does a very silly, like, <laughs> Muppety, like, bounce walk with his hands flopping at his side. Like, oh. if there was a sound effect for it, it'd be like, do 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 Yeah, <laughs> crossing over the kitchen. He picks up a box of cereal and goes to the dining room. And then again, we hear Larry go, cut. Oh, there's a problem here. Hold uh. it. And he says, cereal's no good. Uh, let's go with the brand. So there were two boxes of cereal yeah. on the counter, and Balky had picked up the box of sugar booms. Sugar booms. He says, I always eat sugar booms on Saturday, cousin. <laughs> and Larry's like, Balky, do you want your mama to think you always have a cereal loaded with sugar and lacking in nutritional value? And Balky stutters. He goes, ah. Yeah. He goes, like, don't you eat bran sometimes? <laughs> and Belky says, I eat bran on Mondays, Wednesdays, and on any day when I feel a bit sluggish. Yeah, he's kind of embarrassed to say that. <laughs> yeah. Kind of funny. You got, and then, and then Larry's just like, well, pretend it's Monday or Wednesday or a day you feel a bit sluggish. sluggish. <laughs> but Belky goes, pretending? Isn't that lying? And Larry's, no, 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 we're making a movie. Oh, boy. Listen, acting is pretending. We are filming the highlights of your day, he says. He goes, any day? He goes, it could be yesterday. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It will be tomorrow at the rate we're going. 
But yes, acting is pretending, but that's not what they're doing here. here this is supposed to be a comes, documentary. Here comes more manipulation. <laughs> there you got it. Uh, he says the important thing is to capture the essence of your life. I'm like Larry, Mark Baker is worked up this yeah. whole scene because he's just like the important thing is to capture the essence of your life. He is frantic, worked up this whole time. Frantic it's so Larry. Funny. And Balky again says, isn't that lying? And he says, Larry says, no, it's filmmaking. <laughs> and here's Larry's man's Larry explaining filmmaking. You take a seed of truth, fertilize it with your imagination, <laughs> water it with exaggeration, and voila, docudrama. I mean, that's a good recipe. <laughs> Balky goes, you mean like Saturday night with Connie Chung? Larry says, exactly. That was a show. I know Connie Chung. She's yes. famous news anchor, and she had a show called Saturday Night. So Larry uh, says, "All right, let's go. Let's do it over here." And he and we're going with the brand. And he pulls out the bo- the other cereal box, which is a brand cereal. He's like, "All right, just show your mom, your mama, how you eat a nice, nutritious breakfast." And then Valky takes the box, goes to sit down at the kitchen at the dining table. Pours himself a bowl full, and then there's a sugar bowl next to his cereal bowl. He takes some sugar. He takes like a spoonful of sugar and puts it on the cereal. Then he puts the spoon down and picks up the whole sugar bowl, turns it upside down, and dumps all the sugar ah, onto ah, the brand cereal. It's so funny. Because in the 80s, that's how we yes. ate healthy cereal. That's how you flavored your healthy With cereal. With a ton of sugar you on just it. just put sugar on it. Otherwise, you, nobody would eat it because it tastes like cardboard. It's hilarious. That's pretty funny. There he goes, cut. And the buggy's like, I didn't finish my breakfast. He's like, we got enough of that. Moving on. He's got his clipboard. He goes, he tells Balky that he has arranged something later on this evening. He's arranged a little get together at the apartment. He says, instead of going out to find all the people you know, I'm going to have them come here. And he goes, and think of the artistic statement it will make. Our party here in America, sending our film to their party in Mipos. And Balky goes, I see it, and I love it. In a very, like, what uh, you would imagine, like, schmoo- show business, yes, show business kind of way. way. It's so funny. I see it, and I love it. I love it. And he then he's like, but I better change my shoes, because Mama had sent him some new boots, and he wants to go put them on. And Larry says, yes, yes, change the shoes, and let's lose the vest. It's kind of busy. Oh, my God. And then he said, and yeah, the whole audience is like, what? And then he says, you know, I see the character, the character of Balky in a pale blue shirt. <laughs> what, right. what, what is it, going on describe here? Describe the vest he's wearing. This vest is lovely. It is uh, brown with a red collar with embroidery. It's got some pockets and embroidery on it. But there's these little tassels off the collar and on the bottom they of the... They look like bells, they look but like they're bells, silent. But yeah. they're not making any noise, so I'm not sure what they are, but they're a little they're dangly. They're all over. They're not they're only shiny. on the bottom, but they're on the top in they're various the top places, collar and the bottom. It's a, it's a fantastic... It's it a is very, a busy vest, it's but it's busy, brilliant. but it's very fancy, and yeah. he's got a nice poofy shirt, and this is about... Well, come on. Balky does. This is... He wears right. the best. In fact... Larry's ba- trying to change the whole thing. Balky is quite <laughs> peeved by this comment, and he says, Cousin, Balky Bartokomus wears vests. Now, on this point, I'm going to have to put my foot down on your face. <laughs> I love that line, too. Put your foot down. He means then, put my yeah. foot down. But then he just added, on your face. Put my foot down on and your face. And he says, I want this film to be truthful. <laughs> and Larry's like, hey, hey, I want it to be truthful, too. Go with the vest. Balky leaves his room to go change. And just uh, and as he after he leaves, Larry picks up the phone on the kitchen counter and he dials a number and we hear him go, yeah, hello, Don, Larry Appleton. And he goes, yeah, I just wanted to confirm I've got 10 actors from your theater group for the film I'm shooting this <laughs> evening. What? <laughs> and he says, you know, they will be playing the star's closest friends in a party scene. So I want them to dress accordingly. I want this film to be truthful. truthful. He's, this is turned from a home video to a film that Larry is directing. Uh, with, actors with actors playing Larry. This is so, what is going on? It's completely ridiculous. Uh, and the scene fades and we end act one. Listener, join the conversation. Join our Facebook group. There's a link in the show notes or just search for Dance of Joy podcast group where you can meet other listeners and share your love for Belky and Larry and comment on the episode threads I post there before we record episodes. And then your episode 
We'll read your name. We'll read your comment. You'll be part of the show. Lots of fun, just like that. Bing, bang, bom, boom, beaky. And <laughs> big thanks to our current listeners and current group members who do leave us comments. They're the best. On all the episodes. We love it. I love Keep our cousins. Coming. I love our digital cousins. <laughs> We begin act two, and it is later in the evening at the apartment. And the apartment is full of people whom we don't recognize because they are actors. The <laughs> actors that Larry had ordered ten earlier in the day. Random people who are dressed in like suits and nice party 80s dresses. party attire. I'm like, what is happening? You, What are you doing, Larry? And Larry's in the middle of all of them with a video camera. Directing. Directing. And he's not dressed up in party gear. And he's telling everyone, quiet people, quiet people. And he goes over the instructions all the time. He says, we're going to do the party sequence and we're going to surprise Balky because he's not (laughs) expecting anybody till much later. We should surprise him. And there's a man at the door sort of like listening to see if anyone's coming, like standing right behind the front door. And he says, I hear someone coming. And Larry puts the... Gets the camera ready. He says, okay, here we go. We've only got one shot at this. Let's really nail it. Ready? Action. And the man opens the door and everyone yells, surprise. And Larry's filming with the camera in front of his face. And everyone's surprise. And at the door are Jennifer and Marianne. <laughs> and Marianne <laughs> goes, oh, my gosh. And, and we hear Larry say, cut. And Marianne goes, a surprise party for me? I never even suspected. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Jennifer. Larry explains that the party's not for her. It's for Balky, remember? And Marianne thinks a minute and goes, all right. Oh, only this all right is a little more angrier. Like she wished it was for yeah. her. Like it was different. Oh, right. Also a great 80s sitcom moment. The girls walk in, right? And Jennifer's got like a brown blouse and a, a long yeah. brown uh, skirt. skirt. And Marianne is wearing this little black number and the, very short the skirt. skirt is very short for like 80s. And you hear when they enter, people go crazy. And there's the some audience. dudes in the audience. You hear them go, woohoo. Hooting like they're, and howling. They're literally like almost catcalling. Yeah. Like you don't Ew. see that anymore, which, which is probably <laughs> properly. And their hair is really big. Their right? hair is huge. And they're getting hooted and hollered. Yeah, gross. And I was like, this is, uh, this is crazy that yeah. uh, this is a thing. They come into the apartment and they're like, who are all these people? And Larry explains that they are actors from the neighborhood players, whatever that is, and that he hired them to be in the film. And Jennifer asks, why don't you just use Balky's friends <laughs> and whoever they may be? <laughs> And Larry explains that he's going for a real festive look and Balky's friends just don't pop on film. Yeah, but he's he all excited, with, right? He's motion. all like, yeah. he's, he's convulsing and he snaps both of his fingers. And Jennifer gets goes, offended pop. by that. She's like, well, thanks a lot. And he's not you. You're here. You pop. And you pop too, Marianne. <laughs> and Marianne goes, thanks. I try. <laughs> and Jennifer's worried. She's like, should you have asked Balky before you did all this? She, Jennifer is always the voice of the uh, the viewer, right? She yes. always just ends up saying the things we're thinking, which is yes. exactly what you're thinking. Except we're also thinking, <laughs> why are you dating Larry yes. Appleton? Well, there's another moment here when she wants to like yes. hurt him. Uh, and Larry goes, Jennifer, Balky asked me to make this film for him, and I'm going to make this the best film Post ever saw. It may be Balky's life, but it's my film. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Listen, pro- I'll give you points for ownership of a project, but you're getting a little bit out of hand here, Larry Yeah, Appleton. Yeah, why is he so <laughs> invested in this film? It's just Larry trying to be a know-it-all at this point. So then the man who's monitoring the door again says he's coming. And then everybody uh, goes and arranges themselves sort of in the middle of the living room. And Larry says, uh, uh, now when he comes through the door, I want to see surprise. I want to see warmth. I want to see a lot of emotion. Remember, you love this guy. (laughs) He's He's like full director mode. Full director mode. He goes, okay, ready, action. And the man opens the door and Balky comes in this time. And he's got a bag of groceries uh, in his arms. And everyone yells, surprise! surprise! And Balky's just like, ah! He kind of convulses and blinks his eyes. It's a hilarious, yeah. stunned he's reaction. totally confused. And Larry keeps directing behind the camera. He says, great, hold the look, hold, hold the look. look. <laughs> cross over here, cross over here. And he 
urges Balky toward this a man. He's balding, this balding dude with glasses. glasses in his suit. And Larry's like, big hug. And the guy hugs him. And Larry tells Balky, say something. And Balky just looks at the guy and goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> now, on this line, who are you? There's a little strange thing in this in this episode. It's a little bit of ADR, additional dialogue recording, meaning that line, who are you, was added afterwards. It's dubbed in later, but if you watch his mouth, it looks like he's saying something like, who, the word we, maybe, yeah, and something else. I but couldn't figure out what he was saying. It looked like maybe, who are you, but like in a less pronounced way. It is I don't possible know. he may have flubbed the line maybe. and instead of retake this whole sequence... They were like, just have them dub it over. Yeah. Right? And they didn't stop and nobody noticed it. I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it either. But it's clear he's saying something different. Yeah. But then when I watched it again, I was like, oh, yeah, that is. Or like maybe he's saying, where did you come from? Or what are you? Or we are. What are. I don't know. No, it's something short. Like, who are you? It's it's three words. His mouth is moving in like a different way. Okay, anyway, that's just a weird side note. Returning to the scene, Larry is still directing him. He says, cross over here, cross over here. (laughs) Good, you are so surprised. He's just directing. He's like, good, you're surprised. You're happy, you're happy. And he's like, camera still pointed at Balky. He says, choke back a tear if you can. (laughs) And Balky like complies and like kind of acts like he's emotional and crying. And he's like, good, good. And then this woman runs up to Balky, like... (laughs) Uh, to Balky, it's a strange woman. One, of, one of the actors, actors that were hired. She says, hi, Balky. And she gives him a big kiss on the lips. Yeah, like that a lasts long like kiss. a few yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And she walks away and you see uh, as she walks away, Balky is jello. He's, He's like just in a daze. He's yeah. a day. He turns to like kind of follow her like a zombie, like slowly. And the it camera cuts pans back out. out. And you see Marianne's face and her mouth is just Marianne's wide like, open. What? She's like, what is happening? Oh my God. It's so funny. Uh, but Larry. And why would yeah. Larry tell that woman to do that with Marianne? Yeah, that's a weird direction, room. Larry yeah. Appleton. Uh, it's not a good direction. It's a weird direction. But then uh, Larry goes and pulls Balky back towards the kitchen. He's like, okay, cross back over here. Cross back over here. And finally, Balky's like, Carson, who are all these people? He goes, they're all your friends. You love them so much. And then Balky just turns and looks at Jennifer and Marianne. He goes, well, I recognize those two. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, good, cross over here. He gets them to go uh, by the counter. And who is by the counter? Mr. Mr. Gorbley. Gorbley. So wait a minute. Hold on. None of Balky's friends pop except for Jennifer Marianne and, and Gorpley. Mr. Gorpley. If the, if any. Why is Gorpley there? If you're going to get actors to replace any of them, it would you be. You would start with Gorpley. because They he's don't like the cur- Gorpley. A germa- curmudgeon. Yeah. He's sitting there stuffing his face on the counter with, with food. Yeah. Like, why didn't you get an actor to play Gorpley? Well, anyway. you know what? I'm, Gorpley's None all, of this makes sense None to of this me. makes sense. It's Gorpley's, so weird. Gorpley's always good for one funny line, and yeah. it's coming up right here. So he pushed Balky over to Gorpley, and he's filming Balky and Gorpley, and he's directing big reaction, big reaction, big, big, big. And Balky just like <laughs> contorts his yeah. face, like to Blinks try his to eyes be a try to open big his mouth reaction. wider, yeah, and gets taller. It's funny. And then he asks Gorpley if he wants to say anything to Balky's mama. And Gorpley says, Balky is a real sweet guy. What's for dessert? Yeah. As he's like licking his fingers <laughs> from eating the hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> And then, the, and then we're done with Gorpley. Larry's like, terrific, let's go over here. But Balky's like, no, but I want to uh, I want to Sick. say hi to Mr. Gorpley. And he starts to hug him. Yeah. And Gorpley's like, blech. <laughs> <laughs> and then and Larry cuts it off, too. He's like, you can do that when we do the warm scene later. The warm scene. He's got a warm scene <laughs> plan. Uh, Larry crosses Balky back behind the couch, still in the living room, and... Larry's like, and look who's here. It's Miss Lydia from work. Yes. And, except. <laughs> and Balky like <laughs> walks toward the back of the room, like looking for Miss Lydia. Oh, but Lydia, he, Larry is talking about a tall, blonde, uh, bosomy woman. In a blue dress. <laughs> standing up, right standing next, next to Balky. Her. He's looking behind her. Yeah. He's like, he's what? like where's Miss Lydia? Where's Miss Lydia? And then this lady grabs him, spins him around and right to the camera. She goes, hi, Mrs. Bartokamus. I'm Lydia Markham. 
And Bucky's like, what? His face is all shocked. She goes, I'm so happy and proud to be here at this party to honor my best friend, Bilky. All <laughs> of us at the Chronicle love Bilky. Bilky. He's such a joy to be around. And Bilky is such a hard worker. And, <laughs> and Bucky looks at her and goes, Miss Lydia, have you done something different with your hair? <laughs> He's so confused. And then now the woman is confused. She turns to Larry. She's like, do I have another line here? Is he supposed to say that? <laughs> Everyone's off script. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, and so Balky is like, what is happening here? And he says, he says, cousin, can I have a word with you? And Larry calls cut and he says, hold your places, hold people. Hold your places, people. Oh He's just direct. He's got all the director terms. He does all the director's like. And Balky says, I'm pretty sure that isn't Miss Lydia. <laughs> and Larry says, of course it's not Miss Lydia. Miss Lydia talks to her hand. <laughs> And he says, your mama doesn't want to see th that. I got an actress to play Lydia. And Balky is very confused. He's like, but mama will think that is Miss Lydia. And Larry says, so what? It happens in the movies all the time. They always get an actor to play a real life person. And Balky's like, whatever. I suppose Crocodile Dundee was some actor. <laughs> we got a Crocodile Dundee reference. What is Crocodile this Dundee? This could be more 80s. Of course, Crocodile Dundee, the movie, uh, the character played by Paul Hogan uh, in 1986 as uh, an out of fish, an Australian outback dude out of in fish comes City. into New York City. So it's a fish out of water, out of fish. It's a fish out of, out of water story. <laughs> Hilarity and Susan Australian comes to uh, America. And really, this was like our first America's first fascination with Australia. Yeah. <laughs> it made it popular. Then you get your Outback Steakhouse. And now like half of Hollywood, there's like all these Australian actors. Right. But I remember I, it's a funny movie. There was a bunch of sequels. Not good. I just remember the funny scene where a dude pulls a knife out. Uh, he's got a switchblade. That's he goes, I got a not knife. a knife. And then he goes, that's not a knife. This is a knife. And he pulls out this giant machete this and the guy runs off. And by the time of this episode filming, there had been two Crocodile Dundees. Like there was already one sequel, Crocodile Dundee 2 in 1988. It was huge. It was a huge movie. It was and there like, was a third one yeah. later um, in there, 2001. Those, none of those are good. The first one is probably still funny. Yeah. I'd have to watch it again. But, uh, yeah, I mean, made for a, a small amount of money, be, goes on to be a huge box office yeah. earner. Of course, they're going to force sequels that were not And good. Balky thinks it was real. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee was a real person. And, it, the, you know, it's probably based on a real person. But So he's very bothered that there is an actor playing Miss Lydia. And Larry tells him that Lydia wanted to be there. She even wrote the words the actress is saying. And he says, but remember, we're trying to capture the essence, the essence. of your life. <laughs> and he holds up his little two fingers, his, fa his yeah. thumb and his first finger. And the like, essence. just, the, I don't know yeah, what that is, but it's the essence. Balky tries to protest and, and continue this conversation. Larry interrupts and says, we're losing the energy of the scene. We'll talk about this later. And he goes over to Jennifer and Marianne says, are you ready? Okay. And he's filming them on the couch and Jennifer... Uh, he says, Jennifer, you start. And Balky um, goes and sits between them on the couch and he's filming and Jennifer starts to say her words. She says, Mrs. Bartokamus, you must be very proud of your son. He's kind and generous and loving and I'm glad he's my... And Larry goes, cut! Uh oh <laughs> Balky's like, cousin, why'd you stop her? She was on a roll. <laughs> he's enjoying all the yeah. compliments. And Larry goes, Jennifer, that doesn't sound like the script I gave you. Uh oh. <laughs> and and Jennifer says something very and she says something very nice and normal. And she goes, Marianne, I thought it would be better if we say what we really feel. Uh and Larry goes, I'm not paying you to say what you feel. And then Jennifer all like sassy goes, You're not paying us at all. <laughs> Uh, and Larry does some more mansplaining. He oh, goes, okay, boy. all right, let me explain a basic fact of oh, filmmaking boy. now. And say, the girls have gotten up. He goes, I am the director. You are the actresses. My job is to tell you what to do, and your job is to do it. This has <laughs> gone to his head. He just likes the control, right? He just loves when he's a control freak, always needs to have control. He goes, okay, let's take it again. Uh, and at this point, they're standing, and Jennifer is snarling at Larry. She goes, I'm going to get, get him. him. <laughs> she was going to do physical harm. She was about to beat down on him. And Balky grabs her and stops him, stops Jennifer. 
from giving Larry Holds a her back. beat down. Yes. yes. And then he's. Why are they dating? She's about to like she, punch him in the face. She needs to walk away. Uh, and Balky stops her, holds her back and tells cousin Larry, I need to talk to you in the kitchen. Uh, and Larry's like, no, sit down. Let's finish this. And then Balky's like, now. And this is a serious now. Yeah. Like everybody looks at them and Cousin it goes silent. Now. Yeah. He's he's not messing around here. Finally, Balky puts his foot down. Uh, on his face. And on he says, his face. Larry says, <laughs> okay, now. And he checks his watch and he goes, make it quick. These people have to do Fiddler on the Roof in 20 minutes. I love it. The Fiddler reference, too. We love Fiddler, Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, listeners, fun fact, uh, Imran and Sophia love, love, love Fiddler on the Roof. I was in it in high school. We I, have watched it since, since we were yeah. children. And for many years, even as an adult, it, it I had watched it with my friends. Um, like once a year, you could watch this At thing. Thanksgiving yes. for some oh, reason. Oh, Thanksgiving it always, watch? Sure. It was a Thanksgiving yeah, watch. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so it's just like very comforting and cold yeah. when it's cold out. Like it totally makes sense. Yes. Uh, okay. So Balky tells Larry that he was rude to Jennifer yes, and Marianne. He was. And ba- here's another Larry uh, show business line. He goes, <laughs> Balky, buddy, babe, <laughs> a little spat over creative differences. We'll make up at the cast party. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll my make up God. At the cast party. He's already playing the cast party. But Balky agrees with Jennifer and he tells Larry, why don't you just let them say what they feel instead of making things up for them? Uh, and Larry goes, Balky, everyone has to follow my script if we are going to capture the, the essence, essence of your life. And he holds up his fingers again. And Balky returns. He goes, cousin, this film is becoming a pain in my essence. And Excellent he holds up his I love that line. Wordplay. A pain, pain in, in my essence. essence. So good. Because we are on TGIF on a family friendly show. No way with saying the word, yes. not saying the word. And Balky has had it. He's fed up. He says, First, you bring a lot of people I don't even know. Then you hire an actress to play Miss Lydia. And don't think I didn't notice the difference in height. Uh, he did notice. <laughs> But cousin, the straw that broke Glenn Campbell's back <laughs> is that you wouldn't let Jennifer and Marianne speak from their heart. This is not my life. This is something you are making up and I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, man, he's okay, serious. Before we go on, the who is Glenn Campbell? Well, the saying is the straw that the, broke the, the camel's, camel's back. back. So it's just a name that sounds like camel, but it's Glenn Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, the guitarist, singer, songwriter, and oh, actor, of and course. TV host. That Glenn Campbell. Had a lot of hit songs. What was his big hit song I was going to look up and I forgot, but uh, I don't in the know. 60s he and had... 70s. I've heard of Glenn Campbell. Hold on. And he also hosted the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour on CBS from 1969 until 1972. Oh, Glenn Campbell of, okay, Rhinestone Cowboy, 1975. Uh, like a Rhinestone, rhinestone cow- Cowboy. Okay, Here's I know your Glenn, Glenn Campbell. Campbell. Okay, so Balky is putting his foot down on Larry's face. I don't want to do it anymore. And Larry is, for some reason, not seen any of this coming. He's surprised. He says, what? And Balky says, cousin, read my lips. It's over. Finished. Kaputiki. Yeah, kaputiki. Kaputiki. <laughs> Which is kaput, but he adds the Miposian ending. Kaputiki. Uh, Balky is still not speaking Larry's language as Larry just looks at him uh, dumbfounded and go, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> and Balky says, you're off the picture. And that's and- when Larry goes, <gasps> that's the Hollywood speech shock. he needed. You're yeah. off the picture. And his jaw drops and he's in shock. Now, let's take a moment and talk about a few of these uh uh, actors. Okie dokie. They're actors, the actors playing, playing actors. actors. Yes, so very meta. The man who is keeping watch at the door yeah. in real life, he's yeah. an actor named Gary Bolin. Okay. Um, and uh, in his IMDb biography, we learn that he used to work as a jungle cruise guide at Disneyland and even managed to derail the boat once. Oh, boy. Not, on the jungle cruise not, at Disneyland. Not good at that job, was he? Uh, the woman who played Marianne, the woman who kissed Balky, yes. her name in real life is was Darla Slavens at the time, and she acted for a long time. She was in the movie American Summer, which came out in 2008. Which was a long time ago. Which is still a long time ago. Maybe she's still acting. And then the woman... Who played Lydia? Lydia. Who's this lady? 
Her name is Bobby Jo Lathan. She looks like a Bobby Jo. And not only was she an actress, but she has published several cooking books. Oh, Bobby Jo's recipes. Cookbooks. Yeah. Okay. Cooking books. I guess they're called cooking cookbooks. <laughs> books for cooking. You cook the books and then you eat the books. No. Mm, tasty books. Books that teach you how to cook. The next scene cuts to later in that same night and the actors have gone and Larry has also gone somewhere. And we just see Balky on the couch with Jennifer and Marianne and they're watching the tape that Balky has, I guess Balky took over and made the tape that he wanted to make and they're watching it on the TV. We're watching the tape at this point. Uh, we're seeing what the tape is and Balky's introducing Jennifer as cousin Larry's girlfriend and Jennifer saying how much they all love Balky. And then we hear Balky in the tape say, um, Mama, I want to introduce you. I want you to meet someone really special to me. My little lamb shank, Marianne. And, but at this point, Larry has quietly entered the room behind them. They right. haven't heard him. And he's like watching them watch the tape and right. watching the tape. Right. He's come from outside the apartment. He went for a walk or something. On the tape, we see Marianne standing by the fireplace and she starts to talk. And as she talks <laughs> and she's saying, you know, Mrs. Bartakamas, I just want to say how glad I am. I met your son. And as she keeps talking, the camera dr pans down her legs. I mean, I'm telling and you, it this stays little, on this her black legs dress. for a while. This is quite a black number she's got on here. And then it <sighs> comes back up and then she fin and she says, he has a special place in my heart. Thank you so much for letting him come to America. Then she moves toward the camera, which is Balky holding the camera. And then we we just see the camera like shake. Yeah. Who knows? Are Balky's they hugging? Are they Balky kissing? Go, whoa, and, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then she steps back and says bye and goes <sighs> off the camera. And then Balky turns the camera again around to him, his own face and goes, wow. <laughs> and then his final monologue to his mama. He said, I hope everyone's having a great time at the reunion. Mama, I wish I could be there with you. You could tell me everything that's happened since the last time I was on Mipos. I wish we could go walking in your garden again. We could go and sit under the olive tree and watch the sunset Aww. and spit pits for distance. Oh, that's a fun game. Uh, and then he says, uh, maybe I'll see you at the next reunion. Bye, Mama. And he turns off the tape with the re with the remote control. And the girls are gushing. Jennifer says, that was beautiful. And then Larry pipes up and says, yeah, it was. And then they all look up and realize that Larry has Ooh. been there. Ah. And so Jennifer and Marianne excuse themselves because they know that the two boys have to talk. And they leave. And as they're leaving, Marianne says, you know, I don't know what Lydia's been doing to herself, but she sure looks fabulous. Uh, so Marianne still thought that was Lydia. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> So Larry is feeling quite sheepish and he says, I saw your film. It looked good. And Balky says, thank you. Uh, and Balky says his only regret is that his closest and dearest friend in the whole world is not in the film. And he wants mama to meet him. And Larry says, well, I wish I could have been in it. Also of note, at this point, the camera is on what you a call tri a tripod. <laughs> a tripod. That is pointing now at the couch. It's been there, yes. standing there the whole time. It's not freestanding. Right. And so ba Larry says, I wish I could have been in it. And Balky's like, well, I still have the camera. And he points at the camera, which is on the tripod and facing the couch. And he gets up and he presses a button on the camera to record, and he and Larry both sit down on the couch. Wait a minute, were they not just watching the tape they on were the television? The tape on the television. There's probably no in tape the in the VCR. The, the tape should be in the VCR Unless in order they, to watch yes, it. Yes, and it's not connected to the can the TV. There's no cables. Unless there's another tape in there, which means at some point Balky's going to have to learn how to edit VHS Two tapes, tapes to together. Tape. Yeah, and let me tell you, having done that in the '80s, it was not easy. Or maybe it's he'll just send chore. both tapes. No. This whole next bit the mail. was never recorded. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm going with, which is a shame, too. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> right there, as Larry starts, you hear kind of an extended lesson time, sweet, sappy, yeah. uh, emotional music. We have your little, you have your typical guitar, and there's a little bit of harmonica mm. in there. It's very nice, and it's longer than, like, your usual lesson time music. Why? Because Larry sits down, and he's finally, like, shed his ego, right? He's come to his senses, uh, and he goes, Mrs. Bartakamus, everyone. He doesn't know what to say. And Balky, Balky is not giving him direction. 
He's like, cousin, just say what you feel. Uh, he goes, they're your family too. Go ahead. And Larry goes, I know you're all sad because Balky's not there. And I know you miss him. And he goes, I know because I'd miss him too if he weren't here. Aww. He is my best friend. And don't worry about him because he's doing fine here in America. I look out for him. What? And he says, we look out for each other, uh. actually. And then he goes, I hope you're having a great reunion. Bye, Mama. It's a very sweet, yeah. humble, heartfelt message, finally, from the Larry Appleton. And then Balky says, cousin, that was very nice. Now, can you take it again and this time make it pop uh -huh, <laughs> and pop roll back. credits? And also they have to do it again because the tape was in the VCR and not in the camera. None of it was taped. Roll credits. <laughs> and roll credits. Listener, visit our Dance of Joy Tea Public Shop where we host a bunch of swag you can purchase and support. Give back to the show like T-shirts and hoodies and mugs and cell phone cases and tote bags, pillows. Lots of fun items, lots of sales with the Dance of Joy logo. And you'd be uh, giving back to the show and getting some cool stuff. Uh, okay, so what did we think <laughs> of this episode that of a plot that was kind of a ridiculous okay. Larry plan going on? The episode as it was didn't have a whole lot of substance in it for me. Like, I, I didn't really understand why Larry was so, in, except that Larry just wants to be in control all the time, wants to Larry explain and thinks he knows everything about everything. Yeah, he's a know-it-all. But, but usually in these situations, we get a bit of backstory. Like, like last the episode, right. Bunky McDoinky. Bunky McDoinky. Binky McDinky. Yes, that's was why. his motivation. To why, push Lydia, right? Right. Yeah. But here, we don't really have that. Um, and so I was a little bit confused until I found some notes about this episode and I read that in an earlier version in a script, there was that motivation line. At least I interpreted it that way and it didn't make it to the end, which is a shame. Okay, because let's pretend this is how the episode ends. So you would replace this with the message to mama because really that heartfelt message kind of validates... The, that he Larry learned something. Maybe I no, don't know. I mean, but we still never knew like why. Where would you put Where this? Where was in? Larry's okay, well, growth? Read, read so, what it is. so in the earlier version of the script, in the lesson time segment, Larry tells Balky, "I meant well. I thought you. I thought you'd want to impress your family." And if I was making a film of my life to send home, I'd try to paint a more impressive picture so that they would be proud of me. Very American thing to yeah, do, okay? Yeah. Like dress it up. Yeah. Embellish, like, you know, exaggerate. it's like what everyone's doing on Instagram. Well, like show the same off. Now, or, or like yeah. everybody looks happy on your Facebook and they're not happy. And Nobody's then Balky says in the earlier script, cousin, I don't have to impress my family. They love me and accept me just the way I am. Besides, I think my life is pretty swell without trying to make things up. I have a good job. All my friends are wonderful. And I have actually been to the Chicago stockyards, <laughs> something most young Meposian boys only <laughs> dream about. And Larry says, you're right. And I apologize for trying to make you into something you're not. So to me, that's pretty sad. That was a very sad. That yeah. like here you have. Um, uh, two things, Larry's motivation, because yeah. remember, Larry comes from a big family. He's always trying to get his father's approval um, and he gets lost in the, you know, me, uh, Appleton kids. So he would in his he head, it's just natural to be like, let me exaggerate so that people will be impressed yeah. with the life I have here. And then and then we have this juxtaposition. So we have Larry's motivation, but we also have this juxtaposition. Balky saying. Um, that's ridiculous. That's not how we do things. And my family loves me just the way I am. I thought that was really lovely yeah. and would have explained um, that motivation piece. But without that, you know, before I read so that, that had to be an alternate ending because you couldn't do that. And then the, the scene where he's shooting the piece to mama. Like, you'd have to replace it, and then you'd have yeah. to write another tag. I mean, joke. it's probably too... Yeah, they it probably cut it for time. It was too but, long. It would have been too long. what we lost was, you know, yeah. why is yeah. Larry yeah. so... Except for just Larry being Larry. Larry yeah, it's a, it's a... It, you got to do some mental gymnastics yeah. to get to just Larry being yeah. a control freak. A little bit of foreshadowing, though, as later yeah. in the series, Marklin Baker does end up directing shows for Miller, Boyette, and Warner Brothers. He probably did some directing later in his career. I haven't looked it up, but he's still, again, he's on She-Hulk. He was just on She-Hulk, so it's fun to see him. 
Uh, and uh, let's just talk about the timeline of a home, yeah. move, home video recorders, video cameras. So uh, the first consumer camcorder, they were called camcorders. Cam, camera recorder. Camera camcorder. recorder. Hit the market in 1983. Ah. And actually there were two kinds that came out. One was from Sony and it was called the Beta Movie BMC 100B and it used Betamax cassettes. Yeah, so this was an early format of video uh, video tapes. And it was that big kind that had to rest on your shoulder. Yes. Like you couldn't hold it. And we had one. We had a big one too that was on a shoulder. But, yeah, but, but that was a... That was much the, later, yeah. Yeah, but that was a VHS tape, right. which was that same year, JVC released, released the first VHSC Camcorder. So as these things are, like you had Blu-ray and HD DVDs, the competing technologies come out. You know, there was always right. beta and always VHS. And VHS ultimately won right. that war. And another tie-in to this whole TGIF. Um, so, okay, evening. video cameras introduced to America, 1983. And first, they're really expensive. It's a really special luxury item like you were rich people only had them, rich yeah. people but as the years went on the technology got cheaper and i think by 1989 the video camera became ubiquitous like everybody had a vcr everybody had a camcorder or you could rent one or you could rent right. one but really everybody had one so by 1989 or in 1989, there was uh, it started as a special. It wasn't a series yet. It was a special, and it was called America's Funniest Home Videos. And people would mail their VHS tapes of like, you know, your your kid hitting a baseball into your crotch, yeah. or like yeah. a dog falling into a swimming pool, or yes. whatever it was. Uh, Whatever you thought was funny, you would put it in the physical mail. You have to mail it in a big package, and, and then the send producers it off. would watch them all. And they would and may or may not use them. Your video on a week. Well, it started as a special, and it was such a big hit that it became a weekly series in the next year, in 1990, hosted by one Bob Saget, who was hot Our at the time by being. Uh, Father rest Tanner, yeah. rest in peace on uh, Full House, of course. So full circle, <laughs> this whole thing. Yeah. TGI, but so America's Funny Some Videos still on yes. to this day, hosted by Alfonso Ribeiro, yeah. which if you don't know, Silver Spoons, Fresh Prince of right. Bel-Air, great dancer. And now people just upload their videos. So it's a great idea for a show, even though the technology is outdated, you will still always get videos of people Doing ridiculous things, no matter what the format. No, I think super it's funny that submit. it's still a it's show because you can still you can just get on your phone America's and watch. Funny so videos. It's called Instagram videos. or TikTok yeah, basically. or YouTube, right? But they it's probably it. just for like boomer viewers. You like it is for the, the senior yeah. citizen who community watch who watch TikTok, the show, yeah. right? It's still, but it's the same type of videos for 30, 40 years. The show's been going on the same stuff over Amazing. and over again, and they used to have like. I don't, I don't know how the show is now, but they used to have, like, winners every week. They like, would give away money. They still yeah. give away money. It would be a live studio audience. Now, Alfonso Ribeiro has a bunch of screens of people yeah, on, Zoom on Zoom is as the live audience. But they still uh, give out money they every do? week. So that, I think that's the incentive wow. of why people will still send in these videos. But I was like, I can't believe the show's still on the air. Yeah. It's still on the air. Occasionally, I catch myself. The, the, the cha It's on the channel, and, I, and it just comes on. And I watch it, and I kind of laugh my laugh my butt off. Do you ever watch it and be like, "Oh wait, I saw that yesterday on Instagram or on no?" They, TikTok. I don't know. They do a good job of finding things I haven't seen. Okay. But like uh, again, well, I watch it sometimes with our mother, right? It's yeah. Like but after the news, and we're both laugh. It's something that's <laughs> universal. Like both people can laugh at it. You don't have to know anything. Funny dog videos. Pet videos. I mean, come on. And and so good. It became such. And now we're a little off topic of perfect strangers, yeah, but it became such a. Uh, a cultural th thing that everyone loved that it was spoofed on like the Simpsons and America's other, Home videos. Yeah, yeah. America's Home. Well, and back to like the, the video camera changed a lot. It was a yeah. game changer. I remember making home videos. Like you said, we made a lot of home videos. We, well, our father loved video cameras. He would mm -hmm. tape a lot of things. So my whole ninth birthday is on video. He was taping it and it's hilarious to watch. But then as I got older, he pawned off to me, 
the job of hair, take this and shoot everything. And I kind of resented it because it was a little bit annoying sometimes because we had a giant thing. But I remember I tape our vacations and we went to. But inevitably, what you get is 40 minutes of the camera pointing at the ground, swinging and seeing feet <laughs> because you forgot you to forgot turn it off, it was off and you're walking around. I have a lot of videotape of that of our home video. I have another memory that's very relevant to this whole episode with the camera that we had, the camcorder. We you still have it, by the way. You were, in, we have it? Yeah, it's, it's under her bed. Oh, my under goodness. Under her mother's bed at home. It's still there. Are you serious? It's, I think it's in the garage or under the bed. Okay. We still have it. Yeah. So you in high school, you were in a production of Fiddler on the Roof, yes. as we mentioned earlier yes. in this episode. I think you've said the story before. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll say it again. Yeah. I remember that you took me up to the balcony of the theater in the high school, and we had gone over like the whole blocking of the show and yeah, how to videotape I was being Larry. it. You were being Larry I was totally and directing being Larry. Don't my miss this shot. home video. Here's the cue for in this. this scene. Focus on this person. Yeah, you don't want to push in here. Zoom in here. Zoom out here. <laughs> go this way. And it, I had like notes and everything, and I stayed in the balcony and made the videotape of that show. We should find that and watch it. Okay, wait, I have more stories. Then in high school, I did this project for a history class. We made a, a history, a video about the 60s. Oh, yeah, we all did that. I made one but too. But my team, I was like, let's shoot a little video documentary. And I remember editing. I had the video camera plugged in to the thing with the, the knob, the, the editor no, with the no, knob. No, no, no. I did this old school with a video camera and a tape recorder. And I would yeah. play on one and record on the VHS and then oh my gosh. change it and record. Like somehow I figured out how to edit with a VCR and a camcorder. And then when I was 17, this is when I was 17, I used the cameras. It was a 10 second record function. It would give you a 10 second uh, pause and it would record for 10 seconds and turn off. And I was making a series of videos made up of these oh, 10 second animation. segments. No, no, it was live. Oh, okay. And I would set up the shot oh, and I'd nice. count down 10. So the whole thing was a series of these 10 second You know, scenes there's that like an app cut. for that now. <laughs> now. And so that way I didn't have to edit. I was in camera editing oh. and I would just do this and make up the story as I went along. And then sometimes it would be longer. But now you could do all of that on your phone in 4K. You could shoot a movie yeah. in 4K on, on your, your phone, phone and edit and it. And edit it on your it's phone. It's unbelievable. I have one more memory to add. This is why one this story a lot about now. this camcorder. Yes. Uh, what year did was, okay, I think it was 92 when Michael Jackson's Dangerous album came out. Yeah. And uh, MTV was still kind of a big deal. Music videos were kind of a big deal. And it must have been that year or like in a year later or so. There was a contest. There was a song on the album that did not have... A oh music yeah! Music video it was and the who song is, is "Who Is It?" Yeah. And there was a contest on MTV. I made a video to that to song. make a video and send it in. And you, uh, well, we made it. Yeah. You were directing and you yeah. were starring, and I was there helping. Did we ever send that in? Though? I don't, I don't think, think so. we sent it in. But we definitely made, made the no whole video. sense because I was just <laughs> making things up. I was like yeah. me searching for something, and, yeah. things, and then we do the statue. Yeah, and we do the thing where things disappear. Where you pause and take it magic out and then videos. start. Yeah, yeah, we did that we made magic. And videos. then, in, actually, in art school and college, I did edit on the decks VHS with so the knobs. I was gonna say yeah, by the time we, by four years later, by the time I was making that '60s video in high school, it was easier. Somebody had one of those oh, machines, they had or there was one at the school Probably. that we could use yeah. for editing yeah. okay. with a knob. Okay. Um, that would have been the that. time yeah. when I was in college using yeah, that yeah. video editing. Anyway. But now, now, I mean, <laughs> Adobe Premiere Pro, have you ever, I use this occasionally. It is just click and drag and boom, boom, transition. You could yeah. do amazing. You could make cinema quality uh, special effects in After <laughs> Effects at home. The it's, point is, listeners, yes. it's my birthday today, and we are both Happy old. <laughs> yeah, that's how old we are. We that's remember how old all we this are. analog technology. There are some purists. Analog technology, will it ever die? Vinyl records still around. Whatever. <laughs> what did our listeners yes, think about <laughs> this episode? Well, similar to us, our listener cousin, Nicole Stoner, had uh, similar me member Barry vibes watching uh, home movies. He, she says, this episode reminds me of a personal moment from my own life. In 1999 or 2000, my brother, myself, plus two of our family members who are like cousins to us, <laughs> put together a VHS home movie to give to our families, friends, grandma in Macedonia. So she had something to remember us by. Obviously, technological evolution has made keeping in touch easier with anyone nowadays. But even so, episodes and real life connections like this are a reminder that having immediate family 
in the same country as you is a privilege. Yes, it is. For yes, many, it many people. Is. But it is much, much, much easier to. Yeah. Even our mother can talk to her relatives in on Pakistan. On video, on her phone. On her right. phone, on the computer, no problem. It's amazing because I remember her writing letters in Urdu. Yeah, that's right. And it was that crazy international mail that like folded together, yeah. you, like a paper mache <laughs> or origami thing. With you the write stamps. the letter in the envelope. In the envelope. And I'm like, what? What is this? Fold it up and, and seal I just the envelope. That with the, airmail yeah. envelopes. Yeah, old oh, school. Oh, airmail that? envelopes. That? That? That's not a thing anymore. None of these things are a thing, <laughs> which is wild how time flies. Don't be ridiculous. Was said once. Of course, I have. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> And still no Dimitri Sheep appearance. Oh, my God. It's been so long. Uh, Where is Dimitri? You know what? When it comes back, it's going to be so good. It is. We've talked about this a lot already, but now it's time for the segment on our show called Perfect Strangers Today or PS Today. Could this episode be made today? I want to say not exactly... I will say mostly no. The I think it could be. I think the overall concept could still happen in a different way. Maybe I'm. I maybe mean, I'm with you. They're not exactly the essence behind the essence it. Of the spirit this behind it is that Larry. Well, well. I mean, if we consider what we learned from a previous script, the spirit behind it is that Larry was trying to show um, a uh, a very. A made up life on yes. video, yeah. which is basically up, yes. what social media is. Now. Yes, yes. Basically, what Instagram is, what TikTok you don't know is. People itself. have filters on These or content what's creators, real. Yeah. But the idea, like, so we mentioned, like, now you can live stream to your family on the phone, whatever, video. Like, that, just that idea of video cameras internationally, that was like a dream when I was a kid for yeah. like so many years. But, like, what would the plot However, of this story if be? If had a YouTube channel. And he has a vlog, and he's cutting together a vlog that he's going to upload to and send then the what, link. Larry takes over to, to make it all fake. L- Larry could take over the editing and adding filters and just drive him yeah. crazy. Um, so he would want to embellish it and add special effects or something. I don't know, deep fake technology. <laughs> you could make him look like Brad Pitt is your best friend. You know that you're hanging out with celebrities. Yeah. Uh, but I still would want to see more of the why from Larry that we didn't get in this episode. Anyway, uh, my vote is no on PS today. It's not really going to come out the same way. Um, he would like a fee. It's just different. It's not that yeah. special to send a video overseas. Like people just you don't have see to do each that. other Nobody's, all the all the yeah. time. Yeah. Nobody's doing that. It could be like just here's the so link the, to my YouTube channel. You can follow my whole the life. Emotions as I wouldn't them. be as high stakes. Sure, that's true. You wouldn't so. be like, here's this and here's this. So I'm going to say no on this one. This one was a timely episode for the late 80s, um, which is okay. It was still entertaining. It brought back a lot of memories. Um, uh, capitalizing on a trend that was, you know, big then. There was some good wordplay. Yeah. Uh, pain in my essence. Actually, I kind of enjoyed this episode. It was fun, even though it makes no sense. It, the party made no sense. Yeah. Larry made no sense. There wasn't much physical comedy here. Well, there was a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, I just like the continuing plot of Miss Lydia. <laughs> yeah, there that was, was some continuity. Finally, That's good. Finally, things make sense. That's about it. To me, it was an okay episode. It was nice. Um, but join us next week when Balky joins a football pool. Oh, it's a swimming episode? It's a football. It's a pool. football episode. It's oh, a gambling a oh, it's episode. A gamb- oh, gambler may come out again. Uh-oh. Larry's gambling monster. Uh, that oh, that's interesting because that's still around. Yes. Uh, but in the meantime, listener, you can support this show. You can give back to all the fun, nostalgia, and the explanations of technological advancements <laughs> we have been documenting here by visiting our website and buying us a virtual coffee. There, go visit dancejoypod.com slash support, and there's a little buy us a coffee. If you wouldn't be so kind, throw us some dig does little tips. Every little bit helps. We appreciate everyone's support. We also we also invite you to visit us on our danceofjoypod.com website. There on the website, you can find all the links that you could possibly hope for. You can find links to where you can watch 
uh, where you can listen to this podcast. Where you, you watch can, it? No, you cannot watch it and you would not want to watch it. But uh, you can listen to the podcast in all the different places. The links are right there on the website where you can leave us a rating or a review. You can press a button from the main page of our website and leave us a voice message Tell us about your camcorder memories or your parents' or your grandparents' camcorder memories. Tell us um, if you think this episode would exist today. Tell us if you think Jennifer should be with Larry. <laughs> Maybe if enough people are interested, I take that tape of my ninth birthday and digitize some clips or the Who Is It video. The YouTube. Oh, my God. I want to see the Who Is It there video. There is some embarrassing video I have, listener. Some that's actually already on YouTube that you could find uh, right now. Uh, more on that. Well, uh, you know, you're <laughs> Easter gonna, egg. Yeah, send me a DM. <laughs> and, of course, you can always send us an email with anything you would like to express at danceofjoypod at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on our social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we are on Instagram. All the socials. Dance of Joy Pod. But, Imran, what is the most important thing our listeners should do? When shooting a video, always make sure to remove the lens cap and yes. always make it pop. Always make it pop. <laughs> make it pop. And also, share this show with a friend. Word of mouth goes a very long way. That is the thing you can do that would help us out the most. And we will appreciate you and bring your friends and you into this Dance of Joy, Perfect Strangers, uh, Multiverse Family. Mm. And that's our show for today. And now we are so happy. Now we are so happy. We do the Dance of Joy. Hey, 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 hey.